Ranji David. I'm the Executive Director of the Interactive Advertising Bureau of Singapore and on behalf of organizers they came, um, their fabulous advisory board and our panelists this morning. We're very excited to have you here join us. I think we've got about, on Damien's count, about 160 people in the room, right? Um, and this kicks off, obviously, a great week that's planned for everyone. For those of you who aren't quite familiar with the IAB and what we do here, just a little bit of a background. We're an international trade organization for the interactive advertising industry. We have members from the publisher, platform space, agencies, brands, with an interest in and commitment to digital media. We are one of 38 global IABs around the world. Our headquarters are in New York City, and interestingly enough, this week also sees our headquarter office in New York very much involved in supporting social media, a social media week as well. And that's, I think, a great way to reinforce the whole open and connected theme this year. So open and connected, what does that mean? Well, it's all about openness in a connected and collaborative world. And this year's agenda looks forward to reinforcing that across a whole slew of different perspectives. So generation gaps get explored in growing up on Facebook. That looks at the generational issues faced when toddlers become teens on Facebook and they want their identities back. Gender, that angle is covered off as well. Smartest girls in the room and marketing to women will redefine and reveal the great way the fairer sex are taking advantage of social platforms. We've got a workshop, there's an experiment, there's a decathlon, two parties in a secret rave, because it's all about parties, you know that. Um, and that's not even the half of it. So if you haven't checked out the events, I think there are 40 events going on. Um, this week that are worth getting to. But before we get into all that, we need to kick off and we need to get the party started. So I am honored to moderate this session featuring two amazing social business leaders, one from the publisher of Fashion Space and the other representing one of the biggest advertisers in the world. First up, Laura Balfrich, who's the head of social agency at Google. Laura has more than 14 years of experience in technology, media, and advertising. Since joining Google in 2002, she has held a variety of leadership positions in strategy, sales, client service, and business operations. In her present role, she is responsible for leading the Google Plus team strategy and growth <coughs> in the region and creating successful advertising and brand experiences on the platform. Without further ado, Laura. And I think there's been a lot of mis 
perception about what Google Plus is, and I just wanted to spend one minute giving some context around what we're trying to do at Google so that the rest of this presentation makes more sense. Um, the, really the best way to think about Google Plus is, is that it's really the next version of Google itself. Um, what we're trying to do is add a social <coughs> layer to all of our products, and that means Android, Gmail, YouTube, um, Maps, you know, everything that you can think of that Google is involved in, we want to make social. And uh, what does this mean for you as a user? It means that you should have a unique experience every time you're using one of these products that's customized to you based on your social networks and your interests and our information about who you are. And in creating uh, Google+, Plus, we identified three trends that were changing how people are connecting online, and these are around people and interests and conversations. And we started to basically re-architect our products around these three trends and keeping them in mind. So as I go through each of these, I invite you to think about how these trends are also affecting how your customers and your potential customers are um, able to engage with your brand. So the first one is around um, people. The internet over the last decade or two has really gone through some fundamental changes. Um, you know, it started out originally as just kind of a collection of information, all of those blue hyperlinks that we're familiar with um, coming from different sources. It was really just a collection of documents. And then an interesting thing happened, uh, or started to happen, which was a, a the rise of apps, and suddenly the internet became a lot more interesting when it became a lot more useful. We had email, and we had calendar, and we had all these productivity tools at our fingertips, um, and so that started to emerge. But the thing that's been happening recently, which is another new trend, is um, the internet has really become a place to connect with people. And even parts of the internet that you wouldn't necessarily think of, friendly <coughs> and uh, social, have become so. So if you think about search, for example, 25% uh, of the search results for top 20 brands are actually from links to user-generated content. So a whole quarter of the information out there is being created by someone other than the brand itself. And, you know, search is the way that we find information that is being created by people, by experts, it's reviews, it's blogs, it's social information. So at Google, we wanted to bring the power of people, the information that you can derive from people, to our um, products, and this includes search, of course. So I included an example up here. If I was searching around for a place to go to dinner tonight, um, and uh, it turns out that my friend Thomas, who happens to be a big foodie, um, rated this restaurant, Pizzeria Mata, as very good, and I, I trust his opinion. So this is just one example of how adding social information can help inform me to make better decisions. And the other thing about this is this is a, this is a customized experience for me based on the people that I know and the interests that I have. The second uh, trend that we're seeing really affecting online behavior is the rise of people connecting around interests. And uh, the quote here is, connecting through common interests rather than common locations. I feel like I've had this amazing opportunity to explore the people that make up the internet. And you know, the internet in general has always been a place to connect over, over interests, but the difference is that today the scale and the depth that we're able to do that, um, and the ease at which we're able to do that, is completely unprecedented because it wasn't possible before. The interesting thing about this phenomenon, though, is that the more people we're connected with, and uh, the more people we have in our circles online, um, the less we tend to share. Um, you know, it's natural, we edit ourselves uh, because we don't necessarily want uh, all of the information to go to everyone that we know. So one of the important philosophies when we were creating Google Plus was we wanted it to really mirror sharing in real life. We wanted to be able to make it easy to share different information with different groups of people. And thousands of communities are starting to spring up within Google Plus. 
around these different interests. So I thought I'd share uh, one of these stories um, the, that comes from the photographer community. Um, so this man, John Bunnerell, is a professional photographer, and he uh, leads photo walks in real life where he invites photographers to come with him um, out into the woods and take pictures, and they discuss various things related to photography. Um, and one day, John thought, wouldn't it be really cool if I attached my phone to my camera and held a virtual uh, group video chat through Google Plus Hangouts and invited people from all over the world to participate in this photo walk with me. And uh, through that, that's when a woman named Corey uh, joined his virtual photo walk from her bed. And Corey's really interested in photography, um, but she has a problem because the last time she walked was actually 10 years ago because she suffers from multiple sclerosis. So I'm just gonna play a quick video to let John tell the rest of this story. One day I was out taking pictures and I thought, how cool would it be to attach a phone to your camera and hang out with five, 10 people? and they would see exactly what I was seeing through the viewfinder of my camera. <coughs> it was amazing. The next day, Corey Fisk came in with it. I love photography. I have been living with MS 10 years, and this is my world. There is nothing more to my world than that. I just said, tomorrow, I'll take you for a walk. I can walk closer to that old tree over there. Down a little okay. more, right there. For a few brief minutes, she wasn't going to be in that bed. She was going to experience her own momentary escape. She was on a virtual photo walk. The next day, we posted. And photographers all over the world jumped on board. Oh, yes, we have a paper. Look at these. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. Can you guys see what I'm seeing at the moment? Voted on those questions to pick the most popular one, and 
nine people actually did get to speak with um, Obama directly. So I'll give you just a quick taste of what this actually looks like. The biggest trend is making sure that we're creating fuel-efficient cars. Mr. President, if it's all right with you, we have to speak to my children who are yeah, sitting just off camera. Come on over. Hey, guys. Great. <laughs> what they did do. Here. Hey. Uh, how's it going? What are you saying? Good. <laughs> sure to study hard in school and do what your mom tells you. We'd just like to thank you for giving up a little bit of your time to let us all be a part of this Google interview. This was great. I really enjoyed it. Thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank you.
shift the way that we're actually thinking about social. Um, Google Plus is not just a destination or a stream where you go, but it's about adding social to all of our user touch points, and that's how marketers um, should think about it too. And to put this in perspective, um, daily active users on Google Plus spend 12 minutes a day within the stream, um, but they're spending 60 minutes across all of these socially integrated sites on Google. Um, and so that's really a part of social media. <coughs> the second opportunity is to connect with these communities that I was talking about. And every brand really um, should make it a goal to connect with these communities, um, these types of engaging discussions that are happening. There are ways for um, customers to connect with one another and with the brand. And customers in general want to feel like they're actually a part of something, that they're not just a follower of the brand, that they're participating in the conversation. And what a brand gets in return for this is, you know, product testers, you get great feedback from people who actually um, give you good quality information, and you get brand ambassadors who will act as an extended marketing team on your behalf. Um, one example that has just exploded on Google Plus is the um, Cricket community. We have um, over 12 million Cricket followers on Google Plus, um, and there's tons of vibrant communities within this uh, overall community. Um, India Cricket is one. These guys are posting uh, 200 to 300 times per day uh, within this community and with tons of reshares and tons of uh, plus ones going on. So if you think about the opportunity from an advertiser perspective, um, advertisers that are involved with sponsoring cricket matches, whether it's offline or in other parts of the web, wouldn't they want to have a relationship with these communities that are already existing online? And uh, traditionally, you know, advertising, especially when it comes to brand building, has been uh, somewhat of a reductive exercise. It's typically what is the one message that we're trying to get across related to this product or this audience. Um, and this type of marketing works really well for the big broadcast type of mediums if you're talking about TV or print or radio. Um, but in the new world, this new connected world, um, brand building is really expansive. There are thousands of conversations going on about your brand at any one moment, and each of them is unique. And successful brands are really trying to identify which are the most important of these conversations and have a place in that conversation. So one of our customers told us that they've actually stopped thinking about their uh, marketing strategy as always on, and they've started thinking about it as always in, meaning always involved in the conversation that's going on about them. So the question we have to ask ourselves um, is, what communities really resonate with our brand, and are we there participating in the conversation and connecting with them? The third opportunity is amplifying your super fans. These are people who actively want to create content and share information that's related to your brand. And people really love access to uh, unique and interesting experiences. Surprise, surprise. Um, one of my favorite epic moments that we've had on Google Plus was a hangout from our space, <laughs> uh, which happened uh, and connected you know, regular, everyday people in Japan with this well-known Japanese astronaut who was sitting at the International Space Station. Um, and over 200,000 people actually viewed this within the first day of this event happening. We had another similar uh, event happening within um, Australia, where we had our first ever underwater hangout, um, and they broadcast from the Great Barrier Reef from underwater. Um, an example of how a brand did this is actually um, from Toyota, which was able to connect some of its biggest fans with a sort of behind the scenes type of experience. It brought together um, a few of its super fans with one of the lead project engineers on one of its new concept cars, which I guess is this ultra light vehicle that gets over 100 miles um, per gallon of gas. So it was able to bring people into the experience and give them a little bit more information about the brand um, and connect them with a really unique experience. And then in addition to that, it gave them a platform to really 
reshare this information in an easy way. So when you're thinking about amplifying superfans, I think there's a few steps. It's first of all finding them. Who are the right people that you want to reward with this type of experience? Um, and then reward them with that kind of exclusive content or something unique. And then make sure that they have a platform to share this type of information. Um, so 70% of brand content is created by consumers and not brands. And um, because of this, I really recommend focusing on the most engaged users first. And typically, most marketers actually start the opposite way. They start big and broad with more traditional media like TV, and they basically whittle their marketing plans <coughs> down to more intent-based media after that, like search, to try to really identify the small group of people that matter. Um, and in general, when we're doing this, we're prioritizing reach over engagement. But I'm suggesting that we actually flip this on its head entirely, and that we start with um, the 5% who matter, and then use them in order to uh, make the marketing plan even more effective. But in order to do that, we have to answer the questions of how do you actually encourage these conversations to happen between people? And what great content can you um, provide to them in order to make them want to customize it, to want to share it? So the reason these three opportunities are so important is because social really needs to impact the bottom line. And um, social recommendations affect purchase decisions um, in general. Personal recommendations over word of mouth, um, whether this is online or offline, are definitely the thing that every marketer is going for um, because it works, um, especially among people who you trust. 78% uh, of consumers trust peer recommendations, and this is really important. And recommendations at the actual point of decision are even more important. Um, because you want to get your message to the right people at the right time. Um, so other networks, you know, approach um, advertising in some ways sort of like advertising at a baseball stadium. You get a ton of people together and you put an ad in front of them. Um, but it might not necessarily be the right time. They might not be in the mindset to make a purchase decision um, because a right uh, the right type of message at the wrong time is still the wrong app. Um, but at Google, we're bringing the expertise that we've built up over the years in targeting and relevance and really trying to apply this to social marketing. So what we're doing here is we're taking recommendations from your fans and providing a form of social proof at the moment that it matters. So in this case, you know, I'm searching for a particular brand and I see that there's recommendations now as part of the um, Google AdWords ad. And we're actually seeing a lot of success with this for advertisers. Having this type of social recommendation, particularly from people who are within your social contacts, um, really impacts the performance of advertising. Um, we're seeing 5 to 10% increases in the amount of people who will click on an ad as a result of this. And sometimes we're seeing even more for the really engaging types of brands. In this case, um, um, last minute we're seeing a 12% increase on click through rates. But even more importantly, they're seeing an 11% increase on sales, and that's really ultimately what matters. So, how people make decisions about your brand is really changing. Um, consumers are inundated with tons of information. They're exposed to more ads and more content than they ever have been before, but they also have a ton more control than they've ever had before. We can skip through commercials, we can choose not to click on ads. So it's really important um, that the most immediate, relevant, personal, and valuable ads are the ones who are um, are the ones that are going to cut through. So. Um, marketing has really never been more exciting than it is today um, because of all of these transformations. As we're seeing um, more people and interests and conversations moving online, it's really transforming the way that we're able to connect with each other because it's so easy. Um, but as a brand, you really need to be ready for this um, and be ready to embrace the change um, rather than wait. And 
for us, this is just the beginning. Um, for marketers, we're able to um, have the opportunity to uniquely connect with each of our customers. Um, we're now at a point where we can know who they are and what communities they're interested in. We're able to have one-to-one -one conversations with them and ultimately um, build these individual relationships with them for the first time. The key is really to understand how these changes affect your business and to understand how to best embrace them. So I'll end with a video of um, some of the relationships and personalities that are embracing this newly connected world. Thank you so much for that. I think you know it, it really was a great introduction to Plus and, and 